Hey guys, then up here, and today we're going to be learning how to paint your walls with clay. It's a natural, organic way to cover your walls so you don't have all those nasty chemicals and stuff. So, who are you? <laughs> I'm Don. People always ask who he's talking to or talking about in the videos. Ah, uh, yeah. So now we have a face to the name. And what are you doing today? Well, I am applying some American clay to my walls. It's a natural earthen clay product. It's got clay and sand aggregates. And I just mixed a, a pigment into my water here and I'm getting ready to mix up a batch of Loma, which is a sort of a medium uh, textured aggregate that I've been applying to my walls. And you do this instead of paint? Yeah, so this takes care of a, like if you're doing a traditional uh, texture and paint, this would be your texture and your paint. Hmm. So uh, like these walls here, I put a, a primer on and then I just apply my clay. And you're mixing up the clay right now? Yep. So that's my water and my pigment. I gotta get this bag of clay mixed in. This is gonna be a little dusty. I don't know if the camera is gonna mind. Oh, it's fine. Yeah, I had a, a drill that I really liked. It wasn't very powerful, but uh, Matthew upgraded me here to this thing. And it gets a little crazy. <laughs> it's a little too much machine. You can see the first time I used it, I wasn't <laughs> Splattered a bit. quite prepared. <laughs> Now, how thick do you want this to be? Kind of like a pancake batter? Um, like soft, well, no, a little thicker, like soft serve ice cream. Really? Yeah. Um, you can kind of vary in thickness depending on how you are as a applier, but right. um, I started out thicker and, and now that I'm a little better with applying the clay, I've, I've gone a little thinner and it's actually easier. To this over here is already done? That's my first coat. I have to go over that again. Is it dry? Yep. You won't touch it. You can touch it. Know. Yeah, you won't hurt it. Oh, wow. So you can feel. You can feel kind of with the first coat, the, the primer, you put a sand in it. So, and that provides a grippiness. So the clay sticks to the wall. So you can kind of feel that with the first coat. But when I get the second coat on, it'll be. Okay, I think we're gonna call that good for that. And on this, in this room, I finish, I'm going to do, um, there, there's different um, size aggregates, so they have a, a very fine aggregate, they call it a porcelina, and so you can make that real smooth and like shiny, like stone. So I'm going to be mixing a bag of porcelina in with my Loma to try that out. Now does this need any kind of like wind or breeze or temperature to dry or set or whatever it does? No, I mean not. Just the, the normal, I mean, you don't, you wouldn't want it to freeze. I mean, the package says like 35 to 90 degrees, but. Oh, yeah. But, uh, so in temperatures outside of that, you're not really gonna be doing much work anyway. So um, American Clay, they have uh, a few different products 
They have the Loma, which is this, and then the Porcelina, which I'm mixing up now. And then recently they came up with Lomalina, which is <laughs> what we're going to be creating here. So they sell a bag of this already mixed up, but I don't happen to have one of those. Is it cheaper this way to mix it yourself? No. Just the same no. weight? Same. It's just uh, when I, when I, um, I, I get my supplies at Hood River at a company called Sustain Interiors, and I went to a workshop there um, about a month ago when I was going to start doing my clay on my walls because I'd been interested in American clay for several years, long time, and when it finally came down to it, it was I was very fortunate to go and get some hands-on experience before I had to start this project. And so I went to the workshop, got a bunch of supplies, and I've been down, you know, resupplying a few times, but um, so the people down there, Heath and Lauren, they've been really helpful in teaching me and keeping me on track. But that's what Heath does. He mixes the Loma and the Porcelina, and, and that's, that's what they do down in New Mexico, where the stuff comes from. So he, because he's a, he, he buys like in bulk, that's just easier for him. Yeah. And we do it this way. So what is that that you're putting in now? This is um, my color of choice. So it's the pigment. And all the pigments are, I, I can't say what they're made out of, but uh, everything about the product is, is, comes from nature, from the earth. Nothing's chemically manufactured or uh, anything, so you can... Um, Eat the paint? You could, well, you could <laughs> at least put it on your face. <laughs> I've noticed it has a lovely drying effect <laughs> on my skin. <laughs> see some lumps and bumps. So this was, I chose this area as my learning practice area. <laughs> so. So it looks good. Yeah, it is, it is what it is and I did it, so. There you go. This is Matt's little project. He wanted to do a corner, so he's been working on that. That's why it's all messed up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's not finished. Oh, okay. So I did completed this room and I did it's um, just loma and I did a sand compression on it. So you do two coats and then you do you have to compress it and that gives it um, makes it so it doesn't dust and and like you can kind of see it sparkles a yeah. little bit. So that's because I did the sand compression. It brought that. Now will this off. chip off? So. Oops. I guess so. <laughs> yeah, right here on the edge where it, you, you know, because there's a little bit of movement right. there. But say you were to, you know, hit hit the wall and it got a chip in it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the good thing is you can just rehydrate the wall and you get your your patch kit. So you always save a, a little bit of a color. You let it dry out and then you rehydrate that and you just fill in your little Really? Dent. That's so, cool. Yeah, and, and like what I did is I tinted the base coat, which you don't have to do, so it's the same color. Like in the dark room, I thought that would be good because otherwise it would be pretty much white under mm -hmm. there. So at least when it chips, it'll look blue. That's cool. Yeah, super easy to fix mistakes. That's great for like filling holes from hanging pictures or something like that. Yeah, yeah you just take a so this hasn't been compressed yet, but it has its second coat, a Loma. What is compressed? Compressed is where, like, after you have your two, your two um, coats on, you come back and you spray it down, and you rehydrate it, rehydrate it just a little bit, and you get your trowel, get your trowel out, and you go over and you, you kind of smooth everything out and it, and it makes, it's a process that's beyond, you know, it's a, chemis a chemical, not a chemical thing, but a chemistry thing that happens with the sand and the clay, but it allows it to kind of sort of settle in so it makes it more durable, makes it so it doesn't get dusty, and then that gives you an opportunity to, 
to really smooth it out and make it shiny or whatever you, you want to do. Now we wouldn't really have to deal so much with it over here, but say over on Western Washington or something like that, where it's wet and humidity all the time, mm -hmm. will this kind of rehydrate itself? Well, from the, the, air? Good, the nice thing about the clay walls is they, um, they're a living wall, so they breathe and they absorb the moisture from the air. So like if you had it in your bathroom and you take a hot steamy shower, you know, on a paint on a painted bathroom, that water will just beat up on mm -hmm. the walls. So with a clay wall, the wall will absorb that water. You won't see it, but it'll take that in and then it'll release it. So it would do the same thing in a in a humid environment as well. And it's not going to get wet and fall off the wall. Will it um, mold? No, and that's that's the good thing about it is 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 paint. You know, if there gets water behind the wall or moisture in there, there's nowhere for it to go because it's acrylic and it just it's trapped in there. So the the clay it allows the wall to to release moisture and and so it doesn't it inhibits mold growth. Very cool. What are we doing? So we are going to apply the second coat um, for my American Clay project here. I have applied the first coat of Loma and I just mixed up, we just mixed up some Loma Lina. That's the stuff we were doing over there. Yep. And we're going to apply that. So the first thing we need to do is rehydrate this wall a little bit. Because if you try to trowel on the clay on a dry wall, it'll just suck all the moisture out and make it really hard to work and it'll just be ugly. Now how long will it stay wet for, usually? Um, you mean from this or yeah, what like I right that? there, right now. Oh, if I just this here, twenty minutes maybe. So it's not like you wet down the whole wall. You just do the portion you're working right now. Yeah, I just usually do portions. I I suppose it's depending on how fast of a worker you were. But Is there an amount of water that you want to use, or can I just bring in a hose and a sprinkler and just go? Well, you want an even, even uh, application, because if you get wet spots, because if it's too wet, you have a really big problem, because then you'll get, um, when you try to apply your second coat, you can pull that first coat off right. and end up with a big hole. And So you just want, once you see that color change, and you don't see any, that's kind of my little rule of thumb there. And I'm not sure about the thickness of this, but we'll... So you can find out soon enough here. So you want to apply about the thickness of a credit card and if you get it too thick it'll I don't really exactly know all that it does because I've been pretty good so far but it could bubble or crack or just make ugliness. Yeah could you like etch in designs or something? Yeah there's lots of You're artistic talented. I I can't but yeah. <laughs> There's lots of artistic things you can do, stencils, you can blend colors, yeah, you can do etching. Or what about stick stuff in it? Uh, yeah. I don't know, like glass or... Yeah, I've seen marbles. that, straw. Yeah. And I've seen people like do gold pieces of glass or tile, I think tile. So you want to get it fairly smooth. Um, okay. After it dries, after you finish a wall that dries a little bit, 
you can come back and kind of smooth out some brow marks. So do you want to keep spraying the stuff that you've already done to keep it wet or? No. No, you want to leave it be. If, if this is a big wall and, and I had a really big edge, I kind of want to keep an eye on it and don't let it get too dry because if it gets dry then it's hard to blend my new clay with this clay that's right. a little bit drier. So the only time I spray this is if I this edge started to dry out, I might spray it a little bit. But you gotta be careful because if you get too much water, you can have big problems. Um, so right now, what, I, what I, my technique is, I slop on some clay. And then, then I work it into the section that's already up there. So I can blend them together. And then I trowel off any extra and smooth it out. When I started out, I, I took the workshop and I also read all the material instructions, watched instructional videos. Um, and Turns out I got started putting it on the wall kind of all wrong. I was working in, well, it wasn't just the fact that I was working in vertical strips, but I, I didn't know how to blend the new clay with the old, and so I was getting right. this, this bump. Yep. And so I went back and saw Heath and Hood River and he taught me how to fix that. And there's a piece of something. My daughter would just throw glitter into it. Would do what? She would throw glitter into it. So she'd have glitter on her walls. <laughs> so they do sell mica that you can blend in. Seashells, crushed up seashells. Really? You can do what's called lime washing after you after you put on your second coat and that creates a whole new look. There's lots of things you can do. Uh oh shoot. Wait, See you can right? you can eat your product, it won't <laughs> kill you. So you want me to get something to get that out of the ceiling No. There? It should dry. It'll dry and then I'll flake it off. I'll flake it off. Yeah. Cool. So this is kind of annoying. I'm dragging in some of this brown. Uh, I'm going to do blue on this wall, but I didn't remember at the time and I put my base coat in this color, so this wall's going to be blue too, but... Okay, so I better put goofing off over here and mm -hmm. come back over to this edge. Sometimes you get kind of focused on something and then you forget about what's going on at the other end of your project. So I'm going to add a little bit to this edge. And then I'm going to kind of just leave it there, let that rehydrate a little bit. Slot some mud on the floor.
Okay. We're gonna let that dry a little bit, become leather hard. Whatever, if I was to push my finger onto that, it, I wouldn't leave a fingerprint, but still wet enough that it's a little flexible and pliable. I'll come back and smooth some of these ridges out. So this wall is now done, yes? Well, it has the second coat on, so I'm going to let that dry a little bit to uh -huh. where it becomes what's called leather hard, so I could touch it and it wouldn't leave a print. Right. And then I'll take my trowel and I'll really smooth it out, get rid of any marks on there that I don't like. And then I'll let that dry and then say tomorrow, I come back and do the compression stage, which is its final setting, and then it would be done. Cool.